Hey guys, so just a little update. Um, I promise I will be uploading what should be the final um episode of the of the playthrough of Nancy Drew Goes to Thorn Hall. Um, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys the little good news and a little bad news. So the good news is, um. I started my new job this week, and so far, I really like it. Um, I've got a chance to work uh, at the registers and kind of learn the ropes and everything. And then today, I spent most of it, well, actually, all shift, um, going over kind of like the Best Buy e-learnings, but through Walgreens and stuff, so, and there's a lot of them, so, <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I spent pretty much all day, um, just going over that stuff. But then, after I have work, I finally, thank, thanks to God, found the UPS store. Because you have to go all the way downtown, and it's just so confusing to find. But it was kind of funny because I ended up finding it because I saw UPS Semi heading and I was like, follow the truck, <laughs> follow that truck, you know, and sure enough, it was going back to, it was going back to the processing place, so, and the little customer office was just right on the other side. So I went in there and uh, signed for it. And funny thing is, they didn't send me back anything except for my passport and the letter. And I will read you guys this letter. So... Your application for a visa visa to the United Kingdom has been refused. I'm not going to do all the legalese, like Appendix 5, whatever. But, so, but apparently the person, whoever it was, I don't even think it was signed or anything. Mm-mm. It says R-H on it, so I don't even have like a full name or anything, but it says I have considered your application and any additional relevant information you have provided with it and your immigration history. So I have refused your application for a visit visa because I am not satisfied that you meet the requirements of paragraphs blah 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 because you were refused to leave to enter a Heathrow on 12-4, 12, 12, I just realized, this. oh, because they do it backwards, they, well, not backwards, but they do it different than we do, we do 4-12 to 15, and they do 12-4, they do the month, they do the, the, the actual day, and then the month. So, on April 12th of 2015, because the immigration officer was not satisfied of your intentions to leave the UK at the end of your stay, or that you had sufficient funds to cover the costs of your travel. You now state that you wish to visit the UK for a period of six months to visit your boyfriend, Keith Masson. However, I am not satisfied that your circumstances have changed. You declare that you are employed on a part-time basis and hold two employments. You have provided some pay slips. However, these alone do not demonstrate your employment status or your continued employment upon your return after six months. In addition, I note your monthly salary from your employment is about five hundred U.S. dollars monthly. <laughs> and he says monthly twice, which is kind of funny. I further note from your interview report that you own no properties or assets of your own, and you have a tw you have a twenty two thousand U S dollar debt from student loans. In view of the foregoing, I am not satisfied that your circumstances in the U S A 
or anywhere outside of the UK will prompt your timely departure from the UK at the end of your proposed visit. Which, that part I can understand. That part, you know, I can definitely understand because considering the fact that, I mean, that I'm at neither of those two jobs anymore. And I guess I don't understand the whole part about having to have assets. Although I guess if you're visiting, that would make a difference. Now maybe if I were applying for a work visa or if I were applying for a uh, marriage visa or whatever, that might be different. Because then maybe I wouldn't necessarily need to have assets or things tying me here. Okay. In addition, I further note from your interview at Port that you intended to remain in the UK long term and apply for settlement in country. That was my mistake. I should not have mentioned that. But, I mean, I was scared to death. I was in this room by myself. This guy was interrogating me. I had no idea. I had no backup. I had nobody that I could say, that I could say, you know, and I didn't think to ask, you know, can I get legal representation or whatever. So, in view of your previous intentions, I am not satisfied that you are genuinely seeking entry for a purpose as permitted by the visitor rep. In other words, they don't think I'm going to leave at the end of six months. They think that I'll stay and get married or, get married or whatever, or simply stay with Keith. Now, this is the part that I don't understand. Furthermore, you declare that you are covering all the costs related to your travel. You have provided some online bank statement printouts. However, these are unnamed and I am therefore not satisfied that these funds belong to you. How am I supposed to prove that the bank statements are mine? And I'm not giving them my routing number or my bank account number. There is no way you know, that that is happening. In addition, seeing your financial debt in the U.S., I'm not satisfied that you were able to cover the cost of your travel. Uh, and then it goes into legalese again. If you're the foregoing, I'm not satisfied, you met the requirements, blah, blah, blah. Any future U.K. visa applications you make will be considered on their individual merits. However, you are likely to be refused unless your personal circumstances change significantly between now and your next application, or you find compelling new evidence with your next application. And in relation to this decision, there is no right to appeal, which that's something that I heard online, was that, or read online, that um, with visitor's visa, you don't get the right to appeal. So, like I said, most of it I can understand. Most of it I can understand because at the time I filled out the visa, I was not getting very many hours, and I did not have a letter from, you know, either of my bosses saying, oh, this is, you know, that kind of thing. I didn't have a letter from anybody, nothing. So... I mean, I totally, I get that. I, I don't understand about the, the bank statement. My parents set up, an, set up a savings account for me of $20,000. Dollars. And it, how am I supposed to prove that they belong to me? And like I said, I'm not giving them my account information. I'm not giving them my numbers. It doesn't say that. That's the thing. On the visa, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say you have to, you know, it doesn't say give us your, give us your bank account info. So, I don't know.
But anyway, so yeah. But other than that, like I said, I understand why they why they say that. Yes, it is disappointing, but I'm thinking there's ways we can work around this. Well, for one thing, I'm officially working full time. I'm working full time. Uh, I work ten to six. Today and yesterday. Tomorrow they want me to work 2, 3 to 10. And who knows how many other days of the week I'll end up I'll end up working. But I'm just like I'm just I'm a little shocked to be honest with you. Because I was just kinda like, whoa, you know, they're serious. They're seriously going to give me, you know going to give me hours. I'm about blown away. But, so, anyway. Oh, I forgot my suitcase. Don't let me forget. I need to go back out to the garage because I didn't bring my suitcase in. Um, but yeah. So, there's that. So I figure if I keep, you know, if I keep working and I keep building back up, you know, Making money and savings and all that, that that'll help. And then the other thing is, is that I had the thought that, you know, like I said, either I end up waiting for a while, build back up my savings, at least get a car. At least, you know, renew my driver's license in October when it expires, before it expires. Maybe get a car, buy a car, rent a car, or whatever. And, um, and do that. Get car insurance. Do all that stuff. And, you know, and maybe I need to look into that. Maybe I need to look into what kind of assets that, they consider to be good. And I mean, I can kind of understand that if you're going towards the visitor's visa. On the other hand, I'm kind of wondering if maybe I'm going after the wrong visa. Um, and here's the other little piece of might kind of be good news. So, Walgreens and I looked this up online, and I kind of had to get excited when I was going through all these online courses today. Because Walgreens apparently bought out or merged with a company over in the United Kingdom called Boots. I'm not exactly sure what Boots is. But, apparently, they're, like, partners with them, or part of the same company, or something like that. But, that came up in one of the, in one of the e-learnings I was taking today. And I was like, oh, interesting. So, maybe... Maybe things go really, really well at Walgreens. Maybe I can get a work visa. And I can actually work. And my boss can, like, write me a letter and all that stuff. And I can transfer over there. And work at this Boots place. Maybe. I mean, I'm not saying 100%, but it's a possibility. And then, if I can get over there, uh, work on the, work on the visit, work on the work visa, then maybe that would make it easier for me to, for Keith and I, to get a Marriage pizza. It's possible, you know. So, I don't know. 
And like I said, I don't have all the information yet, and I don't really know for sure. Um, I have a feeling I need to talk to somebody who knows a little bit more about this kind of stuff. And I'm not really sure, like, if I need to go to, like, a travel agency, or if I need to, or if there's somebody legal, you know, if there's, like, a legal representative that I can do. Maybe I should call, like, my grandpa's law firm and see if anybody there can give me some advice. I mean, it's possible. I'm not 100%. I'm just kind of going through ideas right now. But I'm really thankful that I at least have the letter. That I at least know now, you know, what the deal is. You know, why they refused. Why the, you know... And I have to say it drives me crazy because they're still incredibly vague in the letter. I mean, it's very much, whoa, lightning. It's still very much whoever processed my application is still very much their beliefs, you know? You know what I mean? It's not like, I mean, I never got an email other than the email that was from the email that they sent me to let me know that they'd received my application. But other than that, I haven't received any other email. I haven't received, you know, there's been no communication. And I don't know. It's just, if I were in that position and I were working on visas for people, I would be trying to get in contact with them. I would be trying to send them, like, an email, at, an email, or call them, or what, and I realize you probably can't, you know, they have so many that they probably can't do that for everybody. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like, I'm in Iowa. It's not that far away from New York. It's not like they're in England, and I'm trying to get, communicate with somebody, you know, from there. Especially in this day and age, when you can Skype, when you can email each other, when you can, you know, get on forums and personal message people and stuff like that. You're telling me that they can't do anything like that. And again, that brings me back to the guy who interviewed me the first time when I was turned away at Heathrow. And he was like, you know, and he just refused to believe that me meeting a guy online was feasible. And I'm like, I so, uh, you know, if I, if I could have the opportunity to go back in time... I'd be like, do you not have a computer? Do you not use a computer as part of your job? Do you not, you know? And maybe England isn't as far along as America is as far as, you know, accepting the whole technological advances. I don't know 100%. All I'm saying is... It's just weird, you know? It's just weird to me that, I mean, even in this letter, you know? I mean, the fact that they still send paper letters, you know, that they basically are just like, nope, we refuse to talk to you. That's how I kind of feel, you know? It's like... Well, we refuse to talk to you as a person, you know, or email back and forth or anything like that. Nope. Instead, we're just going to assume that you are 
making no effort to improve your life, that you're making no effort to, you know, to take care of yourself or whatever. And, you know, and that you just, you know, that's what blows my mind. And again, I realize they probably have so many applications that come through that they're probably that they're probably just like if we took the time to personally go back and forth with everybody but at the same time it's kind of not fair it's kind of not fair that they're just like we're just gonna assume based on the last time you tried coming over and be you know I mean, that's the vibe I'm getting from this letter. It's not even that, okay, we can see you're trying. You know, we can see you're trying to improve your life. You're trying to, you know, do things the right way so you support yourself. Instead, it's just, you know, nope, you've got, you know, you've got this, whatever. And I'm just like, okay. So, anyway. That's my thought process on the whole situation. But, yeah, so, anyway, I just want to let you guys know what was going on. And I haven't talked to Keith yet about this, but I wanted to let you guys know. And, um, so I'll upload this in a bit, and not sure when the next installment of the walkthrough is going to be, um, I'm going to try to stay up, uh, somewhat late tonight, just because, um, I work 2.30 to 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. tomorrow night, and I have no idea what I'm working Thursday or Friday or anything like that, so... I guess it just kind of depends, you know. So, but in the meantime, and mom and dad come back tomorrow night, late, so, but in the meantime, I'll do my best to post uh, the gameplay, because we should be pretty close to the end of the game. And then, if you guys want to let me know in the comments, uh, what game you'd like me to play next, then, uh, that'll give me an idea of, an idea of what I should go for next time. Um, so yeah. So, thanks for letting me talk at you guys, and, um, hope you're having a great week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.